Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Well, welcome to those of you who are here, and uh, welcome to those who are joining us via YouTube uh, later on. <laughs> We're glad you joined us whenever, wherever, however. <laughs> Um, I know there are a lot of questions in terms of you know, the precautions that people are taking right now for the coronavirus, and we, like all faith communities, are looking at different ways to modify what we're doing uh, every day to help ensure everyone's safety, and uh, our board president, Blair, and I have been speaking more often. We already speak pretty often, but we, <laughs> we have really been speaking frequently these days, and I'd like him to be able to share a few things with you. Thanks. Thank you, Blair. Hello. <clears throat> so, yeah, Reverend Mark and I have been talking a lot about uh, measures we can take, what we can do to make the situation safer, make it better, make it more comfortable for everybody. Um, first thing, uh, I guess the good news is we've got plenty of space for that appropriate social, social space here, so <laughs> make sure we're not overly close. Um, the first service we did live streaming, we would insert just the sermon which we normally do. We did the whole service, including the prayers, the songs, the meditation. Um, so as things progress, if you feel like you need to stay home, jump on the 945 uh, Facebook live streaming with us. We had uh, quite a few more people today than we normally do, and I'm sure that's going to be the trend of what's going to go. Uh, YouTube, we're going to have the YouTube recordings, uh, both Facebook and YouTube. Uh, you can look at the sermon anytime. So, uh, you know, those are some of the things we're doing. We're doing all these practical things of, you know, the one-use programs instead of the, the reusing our programs. We're uh, uh, leaving doors open so you don't have to grab door handles. We're, we're doing as many things as we can around the campus here. But it's very important for us, and that part of our conversation is what can we do to keep the spiritual food going for everybody. Um, and uh, that's very important, and that's why we're meeting. Uh, I was on a... Um, a, a uh, telecall yesterday with 70 people uh, with CSL around the country, and it's about 50-50 of uh, sanctuaries uh, of services that are not going forward. I think we're probably going to keep going because people can uh, come or not come as they see fit. Um, <laughs> <good>. <laughs> um, and we've got the space to do it, you know, and I think uh, We'll keep the online going. Um, as far as classes go, we're taking it as a, on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, the leader of the class is deciding whether it's appropriate to have the class uh, go forward or not. Um, so if you're not sure, check with the leader of the class, and they'll let you know whether you're doing it or not. We're also looking at having more services online, um, more classes, more just some mini sessions or mini sermons possibly. So keep on. If you're not liking the NHCRS Facebook site, like it because we got more stuff coming and I think it will, will feed the soul. So uh, if anybody's got any, any suggestions, ideas, or concerns, let us know because we're making this up as we go. Um, so it's it's interesting. <laughs> so thank you for being here. <laughs> Blair, and good morning. Um, I have some additional announcements. In case Blair mentioned it, some of you may not have heard him. Yeah, just coming in a little late, I'll just go over it. Our church is choosing to honor a sense of wholeness in our greetings for one another, while we also respect the recommendations by our national health organization, the CDC. When greeting one another, we suggest you use the namaste hands. That's like this. Or blessing hands. What's blessing hands? Oh, blessing hands, thank you. <laughs> and during the peace song, instead of holding hands, we encourage you to use the blessing hands. <laughs> You'll also notice we are now providing paper towels in the restrooms to dry your hands. Please be mindful to discard the paper towels in the trash can, not the toilet. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, and now our regular Sunday, March 15th announcements. If you are a guest, please stop by the table on the patio to pick up a packet of information prepared especially for you. I'm imagining they're still out there. And please, if you haven't done so already, silence your cell phone. Thank you. We have a Wednesday evening service with Reverend Mark LaPonce. The meditation will be at 6.50 p.m., the service at 7 p.m. Please join us. Reverend Mark's topic this week will be Give It Up. Gourmets for God bidding has been postponed. So there will be more information coming as to when the bidding will resume, and uh, it's going to happen. We just don't know when. 
Picnic at the Park. Our loving kindness ministry will be serving lunch to the homeless and others in North Hollywood Park at Tahunga and Magnolia. That's at 1 p.m. today. Box lunches will be served. Tuesdays with Torah will meet this Tuesday from 1 to 2.30 p.m. in the Youth Church, as we do every week. And I will be there as long as anyone is still interested. So we've been doing really well with that. I hope to see you there. A Course in Miracles this Thursday will also be meeting March 19th from 7.15 to 9.15 p.m. in the Ernest Holmes Room. Please join practitioner Jean Laporte for this uplifting and miraculous class, Living a Course in Miracles. All are welcome. Caring Circle Orientation. For those interested in joining a Caring Circle or finding out more information about Caring Circles, there will be an orientation on Sunday, March 29th at 1 p.m. in the Ernest Holmes Room. Please join us. Programs, we are no longer handing out reusable programs. You may have noticed that. All programs will be disposed of after use. So in the interest of conservation, if you don't need one, please don't take a program. We will continue to hand out purple pages, our information sheet for you to keep. And be sure to join us next Sunday, March 22nd, for our special guest speaker, Reverend Patrick J. Harbula, author of The Magic of the Soul. Be inspired as he speaks about radical gratitude and entrance into the sacred. More information about that is on the patio. Information and sign-up sheets for all our events are on the patio, and at the conclusion of the service, our practitioners there will be a practitioner that's available to pray with you. Um, so now let us pray. I, I absolutely know that there is only one life, one power, one infinite loving intelligence. It is in me. It is all around me. It is in each and every person here all around us. There is no place that we can be where that one is not. We are imbued with the divine qualities of love and beauty and harmony and wisdom. And where we may feel fear, God only sees love. And where we may see sickness, God only sees wholeness and health. And I know that that is our truth. And I claim that for each and every one of us. I know that we are blessed by the divine will, the divine love, the divine ideas that are permeating everything about this perfect Sunday service. And our blessing is also because those of us who are here are truly inspired by Reverend Mark's message. We are uplifted by the music and everybody who has given of their time to make this Sunday service possible has blessed us and we are a blessing to one another. Even as we practice precautions, we are truly in that flow of God's love. And I know that to be the truth of this time. I know that Reverend Mark is a clear, open vessel for God's word to speak through him for each and every one of us. And we are truly grateful for all of that and his perfect message spoken with clarity, spoken with eloquence and love. And so with gratitude for all that transpires today, I release this word. I know it is done and it is really good. And together we can say, Amen. Amen. present and more constant than the sun. Glorious to feel God's presence filling me with love and glorious to know that we are one. It is glorious to feel the Holy Spirit deep within ever present Press.
present and more constant than the sun. Glorious to feel God's presence filling me with love, and glorious to know that we are one. Please stand and join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Everyone. <laughs> so just a couple of things uh, that we also realized we hadn't announced. Uh, when we do the collection later, we will not be passing the basket like we usually do. Uh, the ushers will just be reaching over so you can drop your uh, donation in there. So we're just being very mindful. Day by day, we're learning new ways that we can stay connected, love one another, and also honor those precautions that people are uh, providing us with that we can all stay healthy. I uh, wanted to let you know that I've spoken to Dr. Mark, and uh, he is at his uh, annual uh, uh, training and conference right now that uh, he attends each year in Hawaii. He sends all of us his love, 
He is holding us in high consciousness to stay healthy. He himself is still very healthy as always. I mean, <laughs> he's still an energy bunny, um, energizer bunny. <laughs> and uh, also those who were on the trip with him to Bhutan, those who've come back, we've heard uh, everyone made it home safely, healthy. Some others have continued on, yes. <laughs> Uh, so with that, and also for my foundations class, any of you who are in there, we're looking at providing that via Zoom as well as whoever wants to still attend in person. So uh, we, we will find ways to keep doing church, folks, one way or another. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and now, <laughs> now is the time to really give ourselves the gift of meditation. So let's just get still for a moment. Turn our attention inward. And for the next five minutes, I invite you to silently repeat the phrase, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Silently repeat that over and over, and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Dean. Ah, didn't we all need a little bit of that? <laughs> so I have to tell you, um, every now and then, because I usually do the talks on Wednesday night, and there's a different energy between Wednesday and Sunday, and so I'll sometimes think about, well, what would, might I want to speak next time I'm called to speak on a Sunday? So I had a little list, and there was one left on there when I found out I was speaking today, and it was, no time like the present. You think? <laughs> well, <laughs> spirit, I guess you really knew what <laughs> to feed me some time back. There's so many ways that we could continue that statement, right? No time like the present to freak out. Oh my God, what's going on? Or <laughs> from a spiritual perspective, from a spiritual standpoint, there's no time like the present to turn our attention to God and to know that God is infinitely greater than this and every human situation or challenge that we are confronted with. You know, there's no time like the present to absolutely know that God lies within us and within that one mind of God that we are all connected to lies the absolute cure to this virus that people are so concerned about right now, lies the healing of every human ailment, the solution of every human difficulty. You know, no time like the present to be doing our spiritual practice, to absolutely be praying and meditating and reminding ourselves of that presence of God within and around us. No time like the present to pray for God's love and intelligence to guide all of those who are seeking to cure, to come up with the vaccines, to you know, guide us with preventative measures. No time like the present to call forth compassion for all of those who are affected, whether it be physically, emotionally, have you noticed there's a lot of fear going around, financially, and toward those who may be acting out of fear. What a time to call forth non-judgment and compassion for those who are like, you really need that much toilet paper? <laughs> <laughs> no time like the present to be grateful for all the ways that Divine Mind has inspired people to develop technology so that we can remain connected. So all of us who are here today, but then those who, are, who joined us on live stream earlier today who will be watching us uh, on YouTube, no time like the present to be thankful for those ways that we can stay connected. But you know, it's from a spiritual perspective, not just no time like the present. The truth of the matter is there is no time but the present. Now, quantum physics has proven this to us, that time is much more illusory than we realize. So there's really just this one now moment. And I love, I mean, it's inspirational when you get into those studies. I'm grateful for the classes that I took in ministerial school on quantum physics. But quite honestly, if I start exploring that, um, even learning about it, it makes my head hurt at a certain point. But on a much simpler level, we can think of it in this way, that our lives, as they are unfold, are a series of present moments. It's one now moment after the next. Every moment we are experiencing something in the now. And that's really where we have our spiritual power, is that we are able to choose how we deal with the now moment. So many spiritual traditions emphasize practices where we train ourselves to absolutely focus on this very moment, like our meditation practice that we did earlier. Just try to focus 
on a mantra or focus on your breath or focus on a candle. And you know, in the Vipassana uh, method of uh, meditation that we practice, this you can do it in so many ways. You're doing the dishes, focus just on doing the dishes and nothing else. Don't let your mind wander off. Or when it does, notice and then bring it back. But I think people must misunderstand when we say so we can live more in the present moment. So what does that mean? Does it mean that we are not supposed to reminisce about the past or ever look ahead? Are we not in this moment needing to reflect on measures that have or have not been taken up until now, whether or not they work, were they effective, were they not? Are we not supposed to be looking ahead and maybe saying, well, what could we do to make things better? What could we do to have a richer, fuller, more joyful experience of life? Are we not supposed to do that? Of course we are. You know, that's why we've been given the capacity to do so. You know, we are all imbued with God's nature. And as we say in this teaching, you know, part of that nature is that we can look, look ahead, reflect, be in the present moment. But that nature of God lies within us, but we have free will as to how we use it. So the thing isn't so much about whether or not we're looking at the past, looking at the future, or focusing on the present that you know, one is better than the other. It's like, how are we using that faculty? Because whether we're thinking of the past or the present moment or the future, we are having a now experience of that. So what we want to ask ourselves and what these spiritual practices help us to do is to be mindful of what we're thinking about and if we're thinking about the past, present, or future, are the thought patterns we're engaging in supporting us in experiencing God's nature now? I remember a therapist speaking on this subject, and he shared a story that I just loved about. He explained that um, he would have his clients, when they were coming to see him for the first time, fill out a form and briefly explain what they hoped to get out of their sessions with him. And he said one woman had it. I mean, it was really succinct. She simply said, I need to leave my husband and break up with my lover. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> that was juicy. That piqued his interest. So when he brought her into the session and they were talking about this, he said, well, how long have you and your husband been married? And she looked at him kind of sheepishly and responded, well, we were married for 10 years, but we divorced eight years ago. And he looked, he said, so you're still living together? He goes, well, for as much of the time as I keep rehashing arguments that I've had with him in the past, and keep making up conversations where I just tell him off and put him in his place for all the ways he hurt me and all the things he did to me. She said, I might as well still be married to him and still be living with him. The therapist thought that was very perceptive. And so he moved on and he asked, um, and your lover, how long have you been seeing him? And, she again rather sheepishly explained, well, he sort of kind of doesn't really exist. He's more of a fantasy. And she explained that she has created this idea of the perfect man that she needs in her life so that any person that she meets doesn't live up to that, that she can't really move forward because it, the guy has to be like this. But she said, but here's the worst part. And she said, so I create this fantasy man, and then I start seeing about how things could go wrong with him. And I start seeing how he might hurt me. And you know, living in a future and suffering with it when it's not even happening. I heard about that, and I thought about this Carol Burnett skit. 
years ago on The Carol Burnett Show where she and Harvey Corman are in, I can't remember, it was a gathering, but all of a sudden they meet each other and it's just love at first sight and they're just so deliriously happy about having met and oh, everything is so perfect and they're gonna get married and they're gonna have children and they're going on and on about this wonderful life they're gonna have and then all of a sudden Carol Burnett goes, but then one day, and then she thinks of this terrible thing and then she says, and then, and another terrible thing. And after that, and another terrible thing that she just builds up to this frenzy of how bad everything gets, and she just pulls out a gun and she shoots him. <laughs> she shoots him because it's just all gonna be so awful. Thank God for comedic <laughs> comics who can make us laugh at patterns that uh, we engage in. You know, how often do we find ourselves rehashing or reliving unpleasant experiences of the past or projecting negative experiences from the past onto the now or into the future? How often do we create hellish experiences for ourselves out of something that isn't even happening? It might have happened earlier. It might potentially happen down the road, but we are just living in just absolute fear or anger or frustration over something that isn't happening right in this moment. It's absolutely fine to reflect on the past, you know, whether it's reminiscing about wonderful moments that we've had or thinking about negative ones. Both of those can have their value. Feeling grateful for the good that we've experienced in the past, savoring it, and letting it inspire us to experience greater joy, greater beauty, greater love, greater goodness in some new way, as opposed to pining over what it was, but just really appreciating it and knowing that that was, that was a way that God showed up in our lives then, and there are so many more ways we can experience it. That's wonderful looking at the past of things that have gone wrong and learning from them to be able to have a better experience going forward, that's absolutely fine. So it goes with looking ahead. You know, looking forward to new experiences, feeling that impulse of God in us to experience goodness in new ways. You know, that's, that's absolutely wonderful. It's healthy. It's how we create greater good in our lives. Aren't we about affirming our greater good that is ever available and coming forth into our lives? Aren't we about visualizing the greater good that we can step into? You know, but it's also okay to look ahead and see what might potentially go wrong. Things that we might avoid to be able to have a good experience going forward. And as I spoke about a few weeks ago when I was looking at the futility of worrying, we can be good stewards. We can be vigilant about things and look ahead to try to avoid problems and uh, you know, circumvent things that might go wrong without adding the element of hysteria and worry to them. Being a good steward doesn't require hysteria or panic. Taking measures right now that we're looking at taking can be done intelligently, feeling good that someone has thought about things that we can do, but we don't have to be all frightened and panicky about it. So that brings us to the present moment. What can we do in the present moment when our minds get pulled into the past or the future in ways that only create negativity for ourselves. That's as far as I got. Any thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> I've been busy. <laughs> well, if I can't think of something, <clears throat> excuse me, I can depend on good old metaphysician Emmett Fox, who told us, Stop thinking about your difficulties, whatever they are, and think about God instead. But you know, what does that mean? You've probably heard us say that a million times. What does that mean? What it means is put your mind on the good. The synonym for God is good. 
put your mind on something positive, something constructive, something life-affirming. You know, step out and look at all the beauty, the incredible life force that is expressing itself around you. Despite our challenges, grass is still growing, flowers are still blooming, nature is still doing its thing. There's so much good. Let's focus on the goodness of God that's there no matter what. Let's absolutely use our spiritual tools of prayer, meditation, affirmation to bring our minds back to that truth. You know, a practice that really helps is look up periodically. There is something psychologically that helps us when we look up to be open to a new possibility, a new idea, a new way of seeing things. We can reflect on how the power of God has healed so many conditions, be they physical ailments, any other kind of human challenge or difficulty. Look at over time how we have you know, uh, transcended those things over and over again. That was God operating through us that we were opening to to see the way out of a difficulty. That, you know, that one divine mind is the one out of which every solution to every problem, every cure, every ailment has come from, and it prevails today. You know, I want to say, um, as another spiritual pra practice, I would like to say thank you to Congregant Ellen Silcott, who I believe is out there in live stream land. Thank you, Ellen. Um, she was talking about, you know, we are being encouraged to wash our hands frequently and to do so for 20 seconds. And the common thing to do is to sing happy birthday twice. They've told you, do that. Uh, you'll do it for 20 seconds. Give you a couple of other suggestions. Ellen Silcott uh, pointed out to me that our chant, I am part of the great mind of God, is about 20 seconds, a little bit over sometimes. How about every time you wash your hands, you think of chanting, I am part of the great mind of God, or our I am so blessed chant by Karen Drucker. You can sing that, and if you want to add, just in case you sing it a little bit fast, an extra tag of I am so grateful, I am so blessed, 20 seconds, folks. Way to remind yourself of that presence of God and be anchored in it in the present moment. And we can still feel and recognize the presence in the divine, of the divine in us that's still there to give and share. No matter what's going on right now, you can still love, you can still laugh, you can still find ways to express peace and encouragement. That's part of your divine nature. It didn't leave you when, you know, challenges came up. You know, we can deepen our awareness of its presence in the now and enact its nature. I also want to thank our congregant, Lynn Blair, who sent me by email this post that Rabbi Yosef Konevsky of B'nai David Jones, uh, David Judea congregation wrote, and I think is so moving. He said, one of the brand new terms that has entered our daily conversation is social distancing. It's shorthand, as we very well know, for the practical physical precautions that we all need and must take in order to protect ourselves and others. I'd humbly suggest, though, that we use this term itself sparingly, if at all. Language is a powerful shaper of thinking. Wow, we're not the only ones who think that way. And the very last thing we need right now is a mindset of mutual distancing. We actually need to be thinking in the exact opposite way. We, uh, every hand that we don't shake must become a phone call that we place. Every embrace that we avoid must become a verbal expression of warmth and concern. Every inch and every foot that we physically place between ourselves and another must become a thought as to how we might be of help to that other should the need arise. What a powerful, powerful reminder that God's nature in us is greater than our human challenges and circumstances now in the present moment, not when we get through our various challenges. There's always a way for us to bring forth 
that nature into our day-to-day -day experiences. And as we do, we get to experience God's nature from within to the outer world. You know, in this time where we're being encouraged not to have physical contact, I know some people find that difficult. But I'll tell you, when I was in India, I remember saying to my friend, Reverend Bonnie, who was with me, I said, there's such a motherly love energy here that I feel. And do you feel? And she agreed. And she said, I wonder if it's because every time you greet someone, you put your hand to your heart and you smile. There are ways, folks, that we can continue to feel our connection, to feel that power of love that's greater than the fear, that's greater than anything else that's pulling off, uh, us off center and not allowing us to experience the goodness of God that lives in us all the time. So I say there's no time like the present to keep bringing our awareness back to that goodness that still lies within and around us and give thanks for it. There's no time like the present to remember that this too, like all human challenges, will pass. No time like the present to commit to being a presence of love, respect, kindness, peace, and faith as we move through this. So that in our future present moments, we can reflect back on this time and feel good about all the ways we came to know and experience God's nature at some deeper level. And that can inspire us to do so ever more expansively going forward. We can do this, folks. Let's join together in knowing that. Let's join in prayer. Thank you. Thank you. And so we join together in this moment absolutely knowing that we are filled and surrounded by that love, that light, that wholeness, that abundance, that beauty, that joy that is God, that is the one life out of which everything comes into being, that is the life of all. I absolutely know it is this life that animates my being. It animates the being of each and every being here, every being everywhere, that we are all expressions of it. And so I speak my word right here, right now, knowing that where there is any fear of what is going on, if there is any sense of separation from God, that God is right there as love, as wholeness, as peace, as guidance, that this one absolutely guides each one to their greatest experience of wholeness. It guides those who are being of service to help those in need. It guides those who are seeking the greater way for humanity to heal and evolve and grow in greater love and greater wholeness, whether it be due to physical ailments or any other kind of physical human challenge that we face in our human experiences. We know right here, right now, that God is at the center of each of those situations. And because we are all interconnected on the unseen side of life, I know that by us knowing that those individuals who are facing those challenges can feel the goodness of God. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I know that we are blessed to be together today, whether it be here physically together or joined together through beautiful technology that allows us to stay connected on the internet. We absolutely give thanks for all the healing that is occurring. And in gratitude, I just release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. Sorry, I was so into it. 
hearts. So is there time for our affirmative giving? Let's hold our gifts to our hearts as we say together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. I am so blessed. love and appreciation for our wonderful band, Nelson, Bob, thank you for joining us. <laughs> so we do have practitioners who are here to pray with you. Uh, you know, whether or not we are feeling comfortable or uncomfortable with more physical contact, I just say let's absolutely honor the boundaries that people are recommending so everyone feels safe. So no hand holding or whatever. We can love each other <laughs> from a distance. Just want to thank you so much for those of you who join us here, those who have joined us on live stream. It's just um, we are staying connected no matter what. We are getting through this, and we get to be the ones to help others get through it as well. Okay? Uh, thank you for being with us. Let's stand and let's sing hand over chest. <laughs> Please repeat after me. I am at home in the heart of God. I am at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I release all fear. I am living love. I am living love. Amen. <laughs> Are you sure you